Okay, let's finish off the uh, blockchain tech uh, big picture. We have a few more topics uh, to go through. So uh, the first is, is a question. So what will the world look like in the future when there's potentially many different blockchains? So remember, a blockchain is a construct that is, is closed, right? So we can basically go out to the outside world with an oracle, which we'll talk about in a minute, but it's closed. So there is great interest in what the world will look like. It, will there be a master chain and sub chains or side chains? Uh, will there be technologies to bridge chains? And some of these technologies are actually emerging so that you can go from one chain uh, to another chain in a very efficient way. But this is an issue. So think of this as uh, the wild west of blockchain where we will have potentially billions of blockchains, and we need some sort of technology uh, to manage that. Um, so immutability, I've said, is the key uh, component of uh, a blockchain. There have been many forks, and forks are something that anybody can do. So I can create a different version of Ethereum. I can download uh, the Ethereum uh, blockchain. And, uh, and make a change. Ethereum has been forked before. So we've got Ethereum, we've got Ethereum Classic. Bitcoin has gone through many different forks. So these forks, um, it's, it's interesting that, that forks are something that just don't exist in centralized uh, finance. Uh, and, and it does cause some confusion, um, but it is on the balance something that is really important for this technology, that we can very quickly improve the technology. And, and, the, and the fork, if it doesn't work, then people are not gonna be interested in it and it essentially goes away. So it is basically the survival of the fittest and it's operationalized in a decentralized uh, finance. We've talked about oracles already. Uh, this is a challenge for this technology. Uh, many applications need to reach out and go beyond the blockchain that they live in. And you need a reliable way to do that. We talked about uh, the Chainlink and other companies that are in this business to make uh, decentralized uh, the oracle uh, function, but nevertheless, this is something that is still a challenge uh, within the space. Governance. So we've talked about consensus in this course, but um, governance is still something that needs to be worked out. And uh, for example, some uh, protocols like Bitcoin, very challenging to make any changes. Like simple changes, like making the blocks able to have more transactions to kind of speed things up. Uh, the Bitcoin community debated for years over that. So something seemingly simple, very difficult to get a consensus on. So this is uh, a challenge that uh, exists uh, today and likely will exist uh, in the future. Uh, privacy. Uh, this is another uh, issue, and certainly this stuff is in the news where Bitcoin's used for ransomware. We do have uh, some uh, cryptos that are uh, fully uh, anonymous, and there are, there are many issues here, but it's not just a blockchain issue. This is not just a crypto issue. This is a general issue that people can communicate with apps that are private um, and potentially uh, plan nefarious activities with that. So this is a general question. But I think that it's probably good uh, to step back and to kind of think about privacy uh, in a different way. So there are many applications of blockchain, and you'd think that maybe a logical application would be voting. 
So given the security of this uh, technology, we could have a voting mechanism where we could vote uh, electronically. We'd have the results immediately, and they would be verified immediately. But one issue with that is if we did that, potentially the government would run a blockchain, so it would be centralized. And it's not clear that you want the government knowing how you voted. So there's this idea of zero knowledge proof that I kind of want to end the course on because it's a powerful idea. So think about it a different way. You go uh, to the store and you want to buy six uh, bottles of beer. And they ask you for your ID. So you give your driver's license. And on that license is your name, your birth date, which is important, but it's got all this other information, your driver's license number, your address. Like why does the store need all of this information? They just need to know, are you 21? Uh, and above, yes or no. So is there a way to do this? And this is going to be important for especially blockchain technology, but this idea of zero knowledge proof. So in the voting context, you go and you prove that you have the right to vote and you don't need to provide any other information. So how does this work? And I've got an example that you might like. Uh, it's an example I use in my course, and it has to do with two billiard balls. There's a red ball and a yellow ball. Okay, so I've got these uh, two uh, billiard balls, but my friend is colorblind. So when she looks at these two billiard balls, they are identical. So she can't tell any difference between them. So my job is to prove to her that those balls are different color. And I want to do it in a way where I don't tell her which one is red and which one is yellow. Okay, so, so that is the basic setup. So now what I'm going to do is that I will take these two billiard balls and hand them to my friend and tell, tell her this is what we're going to do. You're going to take the billiard balls and put them behind your back. And then you've got a choice. You can switch the balls or keep them the way that they are. Okay, so she's got the two balls in her hand, and I can see that the one in her left hand is red, the one in the right hand is yellow. And I should be able to tell if she switches, if they are really red and yellow. So we go through this, and she takes the balls and puts them behind her back, and decides not to switch, pulls them out, and I say, you didn't switch. She does it again and doesn't switch, pulls them out, and I say, you didn't switch. And this time she switches, brings them out, and I say, you switched. Okay, she keeps on doing this. And every single time I get it right. So we do it 10 times. And if you think about luck here, that, well, well, the first time that it happened where I said no switching, well, it's 50% likely I could get lucky. And the second time, well, maybe you can get two in a row. And that's like 25% of probability. But once we get to 10, and I get 10 out of 10, the probability 
of this just being a luck, that I'm just guessing, just lucky, that's 0 0.009. Okay, so you see where I'm going here. So what I've done is that I proved to my friend, and she being colorblind, and they look the same to her. I proved to her that these two billiard balls were different colors. And it's probabilistic. We could do it 10 times, we could do it 100 times or 1,000 times, it doesn't matter. This is a mechanism for me to prove that. And I proved it in a way where I don't reveal which billiard ball is red and which one is yellow. So this is a very high level uh, zero knowledge proof, but to get the idea that this is something that could be implemented uh, in and is implemented in a number of blockchain uh, technologies. So we are coming to a situation in our world where we won't need to reveal unnecessary uh, private uh, information using zero knowledge proofs and, and literally using blockchain constructs that have a record of history, a record of the truth, a record of who owns what that is not possible in terms of a central actor to manipulate that. So we get to verify by looking at a blockchain construct. So that, I believe, is where we're headed. That is the big picture in terms of uh, technology for this. And uh, let us um, take a look at our word cloud uh, that I'll, I'll show at the end of each course. Um, and we've come actually a long way in terms of uh, all of these uh, sort of uh, words. There's still uh, some to go. And uh, we will deal with the rest of the words, actually, or almost all of the words, in the third course, which is DeFi uh, Deep Dive. So in Deep Dive, we will look at various different applications. It's the most practical of the uh, four courses where we will look at, um, at protocols that deal with credit and lending. We'll look at decentralized exchange. We'll return to Uniswap that was introduced today. We will look at derivatives and tokenization and, and really get down to some examples of how the mechanisms work for uh, the most popular applications in decentralized finance.